Welcome back guys to this video tutorial, this basic login sign up website. You can consider this as a basic express JS tutorial as well, because we will see how to build render pages with a sorry EJS templates and ExpressJS framework as a local server, and how to connect a real database like MongoDB, as you can see this one right here. And we will see protected routes and authentication, how to handle errors, how to sorry how to test your http request with postman and persistent session thanks to jwt which is jso web token so this is the website that we are going to build pretty straightforward pretty standard it already comes with protected routes if i go and say here cards as you can see it's redirecting back to the login page because it's telling us to login it comes with certain uh, front end features like this one, even in sign up, this nice error message, as well for the login page. Oh, yeah, the email. Let's go uh, that email.com, something like that, and we get the error message. Of course, we can log in. And let me show you. I have some register already, some data inside of our database. Let me copy and paste. Kabumon's password, hit enter. Uh, so never and we have a custom message from the user that we got from the database with that logout button and now we can see the digimon on that forward slash cards this route now again protected routes because it doesn't make any sense to go for instance to the login page if we already log in naturally the page will like redirect us back to in this case our main page all right without further ado this is neo dev Let's grow to there. I'm glad that you're here and let's get this started. To get riggedy, riggedy, wrecked, son! Alright, guys, so once you open your favorite text editor, in my case, is VS Code, open new terminal, and let's get started with the setup, meaning the npm init hyphen y. By the way, I forgot to tell you that you need to get installed Node.js and npm. Alright, so yeah. NPM in it have been why? Well, basically, we're saying to by using NPM command to initialize my node environment, probably with the default values. As you can see, those are my default values. It's just create a package that JSON for us. For now, we're just going to install Express. And after that, we need to install Node Mode. Node Mode just detects the changes in our project and restart the server without us doing it. So, NPM install step dependency node run. Right. So basically, it's user to monitor and automatically restart our application when changes are detected. To wait, we don't have to stop our server and run it again manually, thanks to Node Mode. All right. Now, instead of package that JSON, I need to set a script, which in this case is going to be dev, and the script that is going to run is going to be npx Node Mode app. So later, later on, we can say npm run dev. Uh, don't worry about it. For now, let's create our main page. Sorry, our main page, which is going to be app.js. There you go. Now, since we already installed Express, we just need to call it. So we're going to say it counts Express equals to require, well, Express. Then we need to initialize our app. So we say const app equals Express to initialize our app. Then we need to get it one route. So app with express is pretty simple. We use the dot notation and then in this case get which is the HTTP request. The first argument is going to be the route, in this case the main page, and the callback function here, the second argument, we have access to the request and the response object body. The sorry, response object. And here we're going just to send a message. Response that send a single message. We will say hello. And then finally, we'll say app.listen because this is a server. We need a port to listen to. So in this case, it's going to be 4,000. And we're just going to console that log for the second argument. Server is running on port 4,000. Just like that. All right. Once you have done with that, we just need to say npm run dev in order to run our script we set previously. And this is going to run, you know, my console. Yeah. 4000. We go here, we go here, so local hall 4000, and we get hello. All right, our next step is to talk about templates. So here we say npm install ejs for 
JS template, different terminal. Then we need to set the engine. Set engine. So in this case, app that set. App that set is a method used to configure a set various application settings. In this case, we need to set our view engine, and the view engine that we have is EJS. That's the that's the way we can you know call EJS. So by default, Express.js expect us to create a folder called views, just like that. And inside of views, we need to create our first um, view or page. It's pretty easy because you need to say home that ej sorry ejs extension. And pretty much here we're going to build like an HTML document, which I already have here. There we go. Um, of course, this is not going to work because we need to set the route. Now, here is the route, the main page. Instead of send, I like to render a page that is called home. So we'll say home should be, you know, it should be the same name as the views, the page home. Hard refresh, and there you go. I wanted to get to this point because we need a way to use our normal CSS and JavaScript files and images and so on. So in order to do that, we need to go back inside of our app.js and just here we need to say middle words, me, sorry, middle words, and we say app.use. App.use is to specify a middleware function that should be executed for all incoming HTTP requests. So for every single HTTP request, even that that means that if we do a post method, we change the page, you know, you will see that when we get to the routes part, we're going to trigger that middleware. Here we need to say express that static and then public, sorry, public. So basically this middleware express static that public serves static files from the public directory to clients for delivering static content. So uh, you already know that I usually omit CSS because that's part of the, our main concern here. I uh, always focus on the JavaScript. You will find this on our GitHub repository. I, for now, just going to paste the content that I have here. And there you go, CSS and my images. So if we go back, hard refresh, and there you go, we have the CSS, our images, and everything has been set up. All right, guys, we need to talk about partials. So here we need to create partials directory. Why? Because imagine that you have several pages and you won't, you don't have to repeat yourself, for instance, the navigation for each page. So for that, we need to move this piece of code into a partial that going to call nav.ejs, you know, same stage gen. It's going to paste that, you know, it's the same one going to remove that now in order to call this one we need to say lesson sign percentage hyphen include now in this case we're going to use parentheses and we're going to use that slash partials in this case yes it's that slash and not relative paths and then say nav uh, yep you don't need to include the extension for this when you include that now in order to close this tag you know percentage and then greater than sign if I hard refresh this one should be able to see two naps there you go if I remove this last one you see now uh, we're going to follow pretty much the same idea again hard refresh for the header which I'm going to call how I called it sorry I call it yeah header and the other is for so yeah header and the other one is for and uh, pretty much we're going to just to copy and paste. So copy, header, paste, by header, and then okay, for copy, paste, by for. I'm pretty much going to grab this, going to paste it over here, but instead of nav, it's going to be header, and instead of for, it's going to be for. Sorry, instead of nav, it's going to be for. Again, hard refresh. There you go, it's still working. Now, I want to show you how to use variables. I mean, if we go back to the app.js, uh, our main point, this one here, the first route, we are allowed to apply a second argument, which is options. This object allows us to pass variables. In this case, we're going to call it my title. 
column in this case going to call it home just like that now inside of the header we're able to use that now since this is already part of the home.ejs I just need to say uh, less than sign sorry I always forget uh, this name percentage equal and then the variable in this case my title is case sensitive so be aware of that and then percentage create and sign and that should do it now in this instead of title should be home see there you go now the same idea is going to run for our second page which is cars ejs i already have it here just going to grab it it's not impartial but we inside views cars.ejs because that's our second route or page that we need to apply it already includes the includes um, inject data and remember you can find this on our github repository so pretty much the same idea copy paste instead of forward slash and this should be forward slash cards instead of home this should be cards instead of title home this should be car oh my god cards and of course within navigation doo -doo -doo -doo, navigation no this is home my bad my bad my bad and uh, yeah this should be going straight forward to cards sorry I refresh beauty you must there you go car now to complete our views or pages we just need to add a login that ejs as well as partial partial that ejs no no my bad sorry sign up sign up that ejs what am i thinking all right i already have them here so let me just grab this is sign up that ejs and this should be login that ejs as well now we need to go within navigation i don't know where is this control v within navigation and we need to change this this should be login and this should be sign up sign up so login login cannot get login of course we cannot get because we haven't created that route yet so we need to include a router now we need to create a folder called routes and then this one we should have an out routes file that js and we can need we need to call route we can destructor because this already comes is part of the express request sorry no request require express and we need to initialize this so we're going to call the router you can call it whatever you want we need to initialize our router there you go and do not forget module that exports equal to router do not forget to export that of course and here we're going to follow the same idea as we did for the application when we created the route instead of up that get there should be router that get and again same argument should be sign up you know the page sorry the yeah the route sorry sign up if I can spell my god and then the rest of the callback function so request response and the rest that render in this case my page is sign up and remember we are allowed now to pass a variable which is called my title and in this case is sign up sign up page sorry I call it auth page auth page for the both of them but for testing purposes, let's just jump into it right now by saying we need to include this. So we need to say cons, I will call it auth routes, should be equals to require, and then wherever that is our routes. Data slash is inside routes, and then is auth routes. Now that I have here, just above, or sorry, beneath everything, I will say app that use to use who, well, my routes. That's the way that we can call and use this middleware here those routes we just include the opt routes so by this point we go back remember login doesn't exist yet but sign up it does there you go right now the same way it's going to run for the login page so basically it's pretty much the same idea just going to grab it and paste it and now instead of sign up it should be a login to create a route instead of render sign up we need to render login 
okay and we click the login we have the login page all right now we need to talk about of the separation of concerns meaning that meaning that the router here needs to do only the routes and this callback function for two of them they should be on the other place in this case a controller controller right once we have the controller we need to create our controller file.js and basically I'm going to have two um, two functions pretty much is the same as one as here just let me remove this remove this and we need to import that control sorry this this uh, functions my bad uh, but we need to model exports equal to an object and in this case going to be sign up that get and login underscore get yeah separation of concerns because it makes your code more modular and in this case it is should deal with all the actions the functionality that's the reason the separation of concern and the route should deal only with the routes right now we need to cons of course we need to import these controllers in order for me to show you that everything is keeps working the same i mean there is no error okay cons destructuring should be equals to require and then the dot outside controller and then that file naturally we need to use them so get to sign up that get login sign up underscore get hard refresh i believe login sign up login okay great now uh a step further i would like to take is that i understand that we can do this but I, there is another way to do the router i mean we can call router that route and the first argument of course is going to be the route so in this case sign up and now i can use the dot <coughs> get method and in this case the first argument is going to be choose the controller let me just comment pretty much this one is going to be the same so copy paste uh, and instead of sign up this should be you know login so copy paste hard fresh and we're and that still is working all right great now our second step here uh, is to talk about environment variables so first of all npm install uh, dot emb on our soccer center terminal let's go back and so environment variables sorry environment variables they are used to store configuration settings and sensitive information for a web application so in order to create one we just need to say dot emb sorry no and dot emb file should create that for us and this file it's a plain text that stores the key value pairs in this case i'm going to start with the port and the value of 4000 now in order to use that um that emb or environment variables we just need to call it so const that emb should be equal to require and then dot emb in order to actually triggers the action of that emb package we just need to say that emb dot config no params for now and um, but in order for me to show you that everything is working let's go just above up that list and, and create a const called port should be equal to process dot emb dot port why that port because this is the name and this is the way that we can get access to my variable here which is port should be the same you know case sensitive be aware of that if for some reasons we are not able to get that just make that port to be at the value of 400 sorry 4000 naturally i want to look the port here and here we're going to use backticks we are going to inject the data port with capital t my bad port port and let's just make a hard up and running you know stop the terminal and run it again just in case to see that my die emb file is being considered at the moment okay hard refresh blah blah we get the sorry console.log meaning that everything is working as it should be but furthermore or nonetheless in most of the cases you will see a dot emb file inside of a directory called uh, configure uh, config sorry 
so we just need to move this inside of the config yes move and now here in config we need to apply an object an options that is called path so naturally we need to set the path here so app is you know the main on the main route we just need to say dot slash config and dot emb because that's the path that our dot emb is at the moment again hard fresh demons cards login sign up Guys, after you create your organization, you know, in order to create a database inside MongoDB, you go with project, hit a new project for for you for your first time, project name, JWD, whatever name you want to put it, it's okay. Just a name. The owner, yes, myself, and create project. Let's go within database, build a database. Let's go with the free version. Yeah, cluster everything, create deployment. This is important. You should use a simple username and password, you know, because this is just an example. Simple as that. Uh, yeah, create a database user, choose a connection method, in this case, in Mongo. You know, this is this link is important because pretty much you want to copy and paste that for the environment variables. But after the forward slash, you should include the database name. Don't worry about it, you will see that later. Now, let's go within network access i like to show you that when you we can edit this part because in case you want to go back to your project or future projects and in case you have some problems about the connection that might be due to an ip address you should use this one because that means from access from everywhere it okay, once that's you know still loading let's go within the database then browse collections create database database name DG car, I believe I called it, and users. This is important to use users with an S. You'll see later when we create the model. And there you go. That's the simple tutorial how to create a database with MongoDB. Hi guys, our next step is to actually connect our database with our server. So first things first, we need to install Mongoose. Mongoose and the second terminal. Once that is installed, you just need to call it. So Mongoose equals to require and then Mongoose. Okay, then here I'm going to create a function that I'm going to call connect to DB. Connect to DB. No params, this one right here. Oh yeah, by the way, this function should be synchronous. And here we're going to build the try catch method or block. So for the error, we just need to console that log the error message. So basically, when an error occurs during the attempt to connect to the database, Please process that exit my Node.js environment with the code of one. Number one means terminating with an error, right? Naturally, after with that, we need just to call connect to DB. Okay, hear me out. Here in this function, once I am connected to the, the database, I need to run my server. Therefore, the, this line of code right here, I'm going to copy, comment that, paste it right here but with a couple of difference. First, I just need to create a con and await mongoose.connect. This is a mongoose method that returns a promise. That's the reason that I needed to set this as an asynchronous in order to use a sync, sorry, await. And here I'm going to paste the mongo URI. So, I mean, my environment variable. Process that env environment variable dot mongo underscore uri which i already have inside of my that DMB file i'm not going to show you but what i can do for you is actually go to the github repository if you go to the that DMB file you will see this example why because remember if we go back to our database and we hit connect and you go you know mongodb for vs code you will see this link pretty much the same one the same that we have here just with the different this comes already with all of my you know things over there i already show you that it doesn't matter so yeah username password that you just created add and whatever it comes after and then after the four slash the final four slash you should include the database name right without being said yeah we can have access to that and now here i need to say and mongodb and i'll say door sign braces con 
have connection because this returns a promise connection that uh, host okay just give it a whirl we should give we should see and there you go yeah we see the message on the console all right our next step here is to talk about models so first of all let me create models directory here my model fi file that js user.js so yeah so a model is a class that is used to interact with a specific collection in your database meaning that i can say mongoose that model and in order to interact with the database it, here it comes with two prompts the first one is the singular lowercase name of our collection in this case going to be single quotes user or double quotes and the second argument or parameter is the mongoose schema where a schema i'm going to call it user schema this schema defines the structure of documents in this collection which is user Again, the first parameter is singular lowercase name of our collection. If we go within our database, browse collections, again, the name of our database is Digicar and the collection is users, plural. So that's the reason we name it singular and lowercase. Okay, this is a model. So const user going to use the assignment operator, module that, and of course export that equal to user we need to interact with our database now as i told you an schema let me just call it user schema is an is an sorry it's the structure of the document of your database so uh, new mongoose that schema i'm going to use parentheses curly braces and here it comes the structure of our document what do we want inside of our database? Well, we're going to say in the username, email, and password, and each field should have like a property, rule, or requirements. You can pause the video, copy, and paste that out. You can see that on uh, the GitHub repository, but you know, with everything already, not this part. All right, then. well, anyway, so once we just export that, we need now to work with the signup. Why sign up instead of logging? Well, because logging is kind of kind of easier because you can think about it. It's like a, you know we send the the data to the database, compare the data with the data on the database. If it matches, yes, then we are locked in. All right. So we need to start with the sign up method. So in order to do that, we need to go inside of our router, router, and here the next method that we need to use is the post. So post and here instead of sign up underscore get should be sign up underscore post to start with comma of course we need to import that this will give us an error because that it doesn't exist yet fnm then yep request and response by the way this should be an asynchronous function because later on we're going to call our model and you remember each the model the mongoose already comes with certain methods that are promises and we need to use a sync and a wait all right we need to support sign up pause be right here and here we're going to use try catch block to send the error the error right here is going to be pretty straightforward we're going to return a response so return that status 400 meaning by request meaning that user is not created and here we're going to send the http post request i got post request okay but we need a way to catch the data from the http request but how can we do that exactly well inside of apps we need to apply a new middleware which is this part sorry i wanted to explain that but okay app that uses spray json that json sprays the json so basically this is a common middleware used to handle json payloads sent by clients to your server or in this case to our server you know makes the parse json data available in the request that body object so without being said we just need basically let me just copy the whole return my mouse is not working this one right here and instead of 400 this should be 201 meaning that the user has been created and instead of message i'm going to say the body property right away send the request that body just like that now guys in order to see this to test this um, controller 
we need to use Postman. Postman allow us to deal with APIs, testing APIs, or dealing with in this case with HTTP requests to see the data what's going on. All right, uh, good job. Crash course for this. After you install and everything, you go with within collection, blank collection. Uh, just give it a name, it doesn't matter. Just go with test. Let's go within variables. Here, I'm going to call it base URL. Uh, you will see why in a second. And now our variable should be localhost 4000. So, I'm going to grab it and paste it. I need to save this. I need to open a new tab. In this case, going to be a post. Here, in case you don't have these options, just type it all. Double uh, curly braces, base URL, for slash, sign up. I'm going to save this and I'm going to call it test sign up and this should go inside test collection save okay and once again okay let's go within the body to test it out raw should be in the option json I already have it here and I'm going to type it all because remember we are expecting from the sign up what exactly well the username email and password to send that to our um, database so just going to paste it, the options that I have here. Let me just save and let's just test it out to see what I have. And indeed we got the body from our previous code that we set before. This one, you know, a successful HTTP request. 201 request body and we get the request that body. All right, we need a way to actually send that data inside of our database. So we need to go within the controller. In here we need to say, okay, const user equals await what the user oh my god user that is coming from our models you know remember we create the model going to support it in order to interact with our database in this case the collection user that create we're going to create a new piece of data and that data is already coming from the request dot body that's the way we catch that piece of data once that we create that in our JSON file, we're going just to send user, and in this case, user dot underscore ID. Why underscore ID? Because that's the way underscore ID MongoDB actually deals with the ID properties of each piece of data. That's the MongoDB um, case or the way that they deal with that. All right then. So yeah. With that being said, let's test it out. Hit. We get the user ID, it will go within our database, we go with the refresh, we should see the data. And indeed, we do see that, yep, we are able to see our database, however, you will see two issues here. First of all, we have a plain text password over there, it needs to be hash. You never, 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 never send a plain text into your database, it needs to be cash, sorry, hashed, encrypted, some, some way, somehow. And second issue here is we enter a no validated mail, you know, not validated mail. We send it. Therefore, for hashing password and check it about email, we need to install bcrypt and the validator two new packages. So npm start bcrypt and validator. After the installation, you go within your model. In here, I'm going to inject a new piece of uh, property, which is validate. Here we're going to use an array. Two element array are a common parent in Mongoose for defining the validation rules and associated custom error message. So first is the conditional. In this case, it's going to be is email that is coming from validator. Okay, we can use the destructuring way and then just validator. Yeah, just validator without this auto importation, if that works is. From validator, we destructure the isme email method. So this will return a boolean, and depending on that, we are going to trigger the error custom error message. Please enter a valid email. All right. Then, if we go back inside of our controller, instead of hard coding this message right here, we're going to say error that message message. Okay, that's the one that we're going to send. So if we go inside of Postman, you will see that. We don't meet, we don't want to meet any of our rules of requirements set previously in our 
schema, meaning that the min leg is four. We are just sending two. It's the same way min leg for passwords is only six. We are sending two. This is not a valid email. If we send this request, we should get the error that message. And the problem is that it comes with every single error, only one just single message. But if we meet the requirements or we meet the requirements like more characters and more characters, it will send, of course, we're going to get our single error message which is coming from the email in this case our custom error message please enter a valid email All right that was our first step to deal with a validation how to validate an email and then we need to hash the password so we need to use hooks for that we need to say user and schema that pre so previously what we saved previously we saved the data and second argument a callback function this function anonymous function with no params why regular function oh by using the function keyword why because this the word this should be equal to user that schema and that this we need to use it okay here we need to say const sub we need to generate so a wait and bcrypt 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 that gen Solve. Of course, this is not going to work because we need to import bcrypt. So at the very top of our this file, bcrypt require bcrypt gen solve. So this is used to generate a salt, of course, which is a random value that is typically combined, not concatenated as I used to believe personally. It uses a more complex algorithm. So yeah. This typically combined with the password before hashing it. So this salt helps increase the security of the password hashing process. So here by default we are not using number of rounds like 10 for instance, we just leave it like that and uh, without a specific number of rounds, it uses the default value or rounds internally. And the default number of rounds by using that method gen salt is depending or can vary depending of the bcrypt library and the version you are currently using okay the more number of rounds or higher number of rounds means a slower hashing process but it can make it more difficult for attackers to carry out brute force or dictionary attacks you know to make it more secure all right then then we need to change this password because we're going to hash the password remember this is user schema so this is my schema user schema dot password we need to get access to this password should be equals to await the bcrypt be my god if i can spell bcrypt dot and uh, hash because we need to hash the password of course what well this password of course the one that we need to hash and then the salt that we just generated so this is the way that we can you know hash our password there you go now in order to test it out go with impulse man and let's send it like it is of course valid email we need to send a valid email to meet all our requirements so for testing purposes just like that this password send and yeah we get the user id meaning that the user has been created hard refresh within our database you should be able to see that piece of data but with the hash password now we can proceed by adding more custom error message to show them in the front end so here within our user schema we need to override this you can do it by using the github repository and let's test it out with no username and no email we should see these messages yeah please enter a username please enter an email you know custom error messages all right then now we need a way to extract those error messages because as you can see they all come together in one single string in order to show them like I said in our front end like our final view sign up sign up yeah custom error messages you see now in order to see that we need a way to handle this error so we need like an algorithm to do that inside of our auth controller just above everything I will create a handle error function handle error here we're going to set or accept the error parameter console.log the error that uh, message message and here I'm going to create an object that object error should be equals to 
username, email, and password, all of them with an empty string. Why? Because we're going to strat by using the string method, the username error message. We need to inject this text inside of my new object that I just created, depending if we get that error message. I mean, if we fulfill this, we send it, we shouldn't see that error message for the username, but just for the email and the password. See? And we should fulfill that object without error, with those error messages. Okay, now in order to see what's going on, we need to go just right here. Where are you? Okay, handle errors, handle error, and we should send the error. And this should be this should be handle errors with an S because there are many. All right, then. With that being said, let's just test it out. Send the pull request. Let's go within the console. This one right here and we should be able to see that message so as you might have been seeing let's go with another error message like another bad email so no matter what kind of error message we get we always get this piece of text you said validation fail therefore if we go back within our algorithm let me just shrink this window and this one right here I need to say for validation errors the first so we need to say if what well uh, the error that message which is the string that includes which is a method of the string what user uh, validation fail if that is being if that is inside of our text what do I want well I need to console that log for now uh, error that errors the error object already comes with the errors property. So let me show you what I mean by sending again another request. Go here and let's make this window bigger as well as this one. And there you go. Let me make a bar request for every single one. Um, let me, uh, so not me the parameters, two parameters, sorry, two characters, two characters, send it again. And yeah, there you go, finally. We get a whole object so we got the email see this has a property of properties and inside of properties we have a message which is my custom error message which i want to extract and save it inside within this new object the same idea is going to run for the username and uh, okay again username and the password how can we do that exactly well since this is an object we need just to say the following object that values and instead of it we need to say error that errors which is an object and this returns an array which means I can loop through them for each and each property contains you know password email and username contains properties property <laughs> just for saying and we can destructure that so proper properties that's the way that we can destructure that and okay sorry you need to use parentheses because we're using a parameter here to destructure that and then curly braces for our callback function and again we need to extract those uh, messages and store them right there how can we extract this extract there well we already destructured the properties so we are inside of this object we're going to use the dot notation that messages message sorry with no s the single message okay we get that we need to store that inside of our object this one right here so we're going to use the assignment operator because this is going to run for every single error that we have you know for each so we're going to call object error and instead of using the dot notation we're going to use curly braces and the name of the property which we already have by using properties that path so let me grab it properties that path that should deal with that and we should return this object so outside of the if statement return object error there you go now uh, inside of the sign up post I'm gonna like to store this cons I believe I call it error sorry object error and it was let 
so because this is going to be different every time and not error should be equals to uh, object error okay so this is going to return that and instead of sending the error that message I'm going to send that object object error all right then without further ado let's give it a whirl so send and we get the object are error oh message sorry my bad this should be called it um, object error which by using ms script 6 is pretty much the same send it again and okay okay sorry it should be yeah up and running you know they need a time to restart and yeah there you go okay we get the object error which each single error message now what happens if we send actually a successfully uh data successfully request we should get of course the user id and we should see that data inside of our database takeru uh, scroll down a little bit you see takeru and the email and the hash password great now the issue comes next if we send it again we see an error the object error but what kind of error you uh, are, might be wondering well if we go within our console we get e11000 duplicate key error blah 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 the key is you know username that's the one that is repeating why is that that's because we are not meeting our requirement that the username should be unique that's the reason we are getting that error because that's the first error it catches because remember that unique it has to be for the email as well therefore we need a way to get this in within our algorithm how can we do that exactly well let me show you right here just console.log what error that code this is the object and it already comes with this property if we send this request again we should see the same object error empty with everything but within the console we should see the code which is 11,000 meaning that if we go back inside of here we need to apply a new if statement we say if the error that code my god is equal to 11,000 we should say if the error that message that includes what well username username this is my first if statement I will say object error dot um, username you know that's the other way that we can get access to the properties should be equals to a custom error message in this case that username already exists exists okay so the same idea is going to run for the email so instead of username it should be email email no email email and that email is already registered register okay those are my customer messages so upside this if I don't want to run this so I will cut the whole um, function I need just a return object error that's the way that we can cut the function from here if we meet, meet that requirement so if we go back send it again and yeah username that username already exists and if we remove this like two three four we should get the error messages for the email now send oh sorry my bad why is that that's because i said object error that username instead of email my apologies let's test that out again okay okay hard refresh sorry because the server is still loading and yeah there you go the email is already registered right i like to show those error messages in my browser like on the final view there sorry there you go now in order to do that let me open sign up that ejs just to tell you you know the action is using relative path and no validate attribute why is that because when my inputs are empty like in this example i want to show my custom error messages but we are not able to do that inside a login page you see we get the warning default messages from google because inside of login login doesn't has 
the no validate attribute. That's the difference, first of all. Next, above the closing product tag, we need to call the script. Remember reality path, JS, and then sign up that JS, which doesn't exist yet, which you need to create a folder and sign up new file, sign up that JS. Now, um, you will see we test it out inside of sign up. If we type, we'll get this horrible error. Don't worry about it. I got the basic JavaScript solution for that, dealing with CSS classes. There you go. If we go back, we, uh, you know, hard refresh. Test it again. And okay, the book has gone. All right, let's go back. And our next step is to deal actually, you know, to display the error message and to deal with the pause method. That's our first goal. Here we're going to apply the manipulation. We get the form and the empty divs. Those are my empty divs that holds or we hold my error messages. Uh, where are you? Okay. Username error, email error, and password error. Okay, that's my germ manipulation. Next, naturally, I need to say form that at event listener, in this case, going to be submit, you know, basic JavaScript event parameter, then e that prevent default behavior of reloads the page. Yeah, that's the default behavior when you submit the form. Then here we need to reset the errors every time we click the submit button. For that, I just need to grab my divs. Sorry, not that one, my apologies. We need to grab those divs from the DOM manipulation, say that inner text equals to an empty string. Then we need to get the values for our inputs. And the way that we can do that is by saying, first of all, username, assignment operator, and then father element, which is form, that username user name this that username is actually the value of the name attribute of this input okay so that's the way that we can get the input in order to get the value of that input we just need to say that value that's it so the same idea is going to run for the email and the password sorry about that and there you go now we need to try and catch, apply that. So try, catch, log, error. Let's just console that log. My God, just the error in our front end. Okay. Then here this should be a synchronous function. Why? Because here we're going to use const response equals to await keyword, and we're going to use fetch. Fetch. The first argument is the endpoint, which is sign up. And the circle argument are the options. First thing first, this is a relative path. Path. This works because Express.js is set up to handle routes and requests based on the URL path relative to the root URL, which is localhost 4000. Hence, when a request is made to sign up, Express.js will route that to, sorry, will route that request to the appropriate route handler, which in this case is our route sign up, which is our endpoint, it's going to trigger the post method, it's going to trigger the sign up underscore post controller. Alright? Okay. Now inside of the options we get the method property, which in this case is going to be of course post. We have our headers, uh, which is an object, content type, colon application forward slash json and finally we see need to send the body and remember we need to say json that the stringify the body in this case my body is going to be an object an object but who are oh uh, yeah who's are holding my tests or my input this one right here so i need to create an object username call it username but this is pretty much by saying username thanks to emma script 6 and then email comma password we need to send that object inside to our <coughs> database then we need to say cons you know data equal to res that's json and remember to use a wait keyword and for now let's console that log the data to see the data so let's make a request but from our front end in this case within the console inspect console hard refresh 
my god and there you go we get the object error why because thanks to rest.json meaning this part where are you just that sorry rest.json we get the json sent from our server from this controller if we got the error we are sending this error the object error that's why we are able to see that error within our console now we need to display them so we need to say uh, where are you okay we get the error where no 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 yeah right here sign up that yes okay we get the error we need to say if what well data that object error is that exists means that the error exists just grab the whole thing the same thing and inject that so remember uh, okay this will give me an error let me show you again okay it's already here so this error exists we need to say data this is already the data then data dot object error dot email or that password or that username in that order so meaning that I already have it here let me show you and shrink this window now if this exists if that object error exists just apply the following which is for the username which is the diff remember the diff that holds my error message that in text should be equals to that specific message all right now let's trigger again horrorfish sign up Ta -da! right now that's if we get the error but if we succeed i like to redirect our page to our main page well we need to go back and just say if we succeed meaning that if data that user meaning that we succeed log and user sorry not use user let me show you how let's make a successful so let's go with tai chi and brave at digiworld.jp and agumon as in the password this is a successful request sign up and we get the user okay so the user exists now if that exists i like to be relocated so we need to say location location you can omit the window of the global object you know like like saying window that location that assign if i can type sign and you know again relative path and location lowercase my bad so let's try it again with uh, our other tai chi 22 brave 22 different email different username to avoid some errors and sign up okay my god again a hard fresh jesus christ we should be getting redirected okay uh i don't know uh, user one two three four da -da -da, uh, da -da -da, dot com and password that i don't it doesn't matter and we should get this redirected we just needed a hard refresh now that we have successfully configured the sign up process and the user data is stored in our database the next step is to provide a secure way to authenticate the user in each subsequent request this is where our JWT comes into play. What is JWT? In simple terms, a JWT is like a digital password. It's a small secure package bundle of information that can be passed between different systems. This password contains details about who you are and what you're allowed to do. Now, some of the key reasons why to use JWT in this particular project is first, authentication and authorization because here we're going to store the token in a cookie so as long as they have the cookie users will be considered logged in second statelessness in simple terms the server is not involved in this process the server doesn't doesn't need to keep track of a user session or a store session like password js or express session finally we have security since the service is not involved and furthermore we are not storing token Sorry, we are storing the token in a cookie, which contains one option to not make it accessible on the front end. This prevents the token to be tampered with malicious information. All right, we need to install JSON Web Token, sorry, JSON Web Token and Cookie Parser. And within AppJS, we need to call Cookie 
parser should be equals to require and then cookie parser now we need to use that middle words so update use and then cookie parser just like that now within the auth controller we need to call json web token so jwt should be equals to require and then json web token where are we going to use it? Well, for now, within sign up postmed. So after we create the user, we need to create the token, and this token should return a token, of course. And again, using the response, so we, with each response, we're going to send the cookie. So that's the response. And like analogy, this is the key value pair. So the key is going to be JWT, and the value is going to be the token itself. As a third parameter, which is optional comes with a bunch of options which is an object the first thing to do is to say HTTP only to true that just means that our cookie won't be accessible in the front end meaning that no one can ever edit the cookie in the front end now the thing thing is how long it's going to last my cookie so here it comes with a property called max h max h and this works in milliseconds so this max age said the expired time relative to the current time, meaning of today, from today, from how long. And in this case, going to run for two days. So two days times 24 hours times 16 minutes each hour times 16 seconds each hour. But this runs in milliseconds. So we need to say times a thousand milliseconds because default value is this in milliseconds. So this is the equivalent by saying within two days, this cookie should expire All right now create tokens a function that doesn't exist and but we need to send some specific data in our token and i'm going to pass the user that underscore id that's the only data that's going to pass within the token now in order to create the token we need to create a function first so create token and we're going to purchase the id you can call it underscore id doesn't matter just the parameter and then we need to return return jwt that sign that's the way that we can create a token now the first value here is going to be the payload in this case is going to be the id column id which is the same by just saying id mscript 6 ladies and gentlemen second is the secret which is coming from our uh, variables variable sorry environment variables so process.env secret underscore token you can watch that on the github repo and the same idea as the cookie the third parameter is optional which comes with options and the only property that i want to use here is expires expires in so this time should match the time that we have here but this is going to be simple because within the token it only works with seconds instead of milliseconds so which you can just copy and paste for two days two dates all right so as long as the user has the cookie or you know the token within the cookie user is considered locking so fingers crossed let's make it a world this time i mean let's try so username okay let's go with i don't know uh me <laughs> and email random email.com and password okay one two three four five six minimum oh sorry yeah you see it's working my custom error message me it's me it's me oh, whatever it doesn't matter it's logging let's go with the inspected page within application where is my cookies oh there you are my cookie jwt and this is my cookie even if i refresh the page the cookie should be there there you go so as long as the user has this cookie we are considered the user as locked in right now the same idea should run for login underscore post so within our controller pretty much we're going to copy and paste but instead of sign up there should be uh, login underscore post and above this we should say cons we need to structure the email and the password from the request that body that's the first thing now user instead of create we're going to use the login method and instead of passing the request that body we're going to pass the email and the password and the rest still is the same like create the token put the token into a cookie and return 
200 meaning the successful uh, request and then we're going to pass the body request that body um, when we try to do that in postman the catch method is still the same of course do not forget to export that and do not forget to import that in our routes and of course included that in our method of pause sorry of logging right login underscore post login underscore post but as you've seen you realize that the logging is not an inbuilt mongoose method for our model i mean it doesn't exist so we need to create that inside of our model we need to go right here and need to say user schema that statics with an s and then dot logging remember our basic javascript knowledge thanks to the dot notation for objects we're allowed to create new properties or new methods in this case we're going to say and sync and this is going to be an anonymous function there you go and here we pass in the email comma and the password because those are coming from yep this one this method login method email password in that order now within that method we need to first uh, I use the anonymous function because I would like to use the, this keyword which is the model and remember the model is user okay remember that so now the logic is going to run like this cons user I want to get the user from the database so this which is the model that find one this is a mongoose method in order to find something from the database and according to a criteria in this case going to be the email right that's the first thing if the user exists meaning that we found the email and actually matches one of our data with within our database i would like to say cons auth equals to okay we have the email that's one check now we need to compare the password remember the password is hash we need to wait to hash this password compared to the plain text that we send in through the the user interface that password so in order to do that we need to say await remember because this is synchronous returns a promise we're going to use bcrypt that compare because we're going to compare the passwords first the passwords that we are passing so password and the sorry user that password so the password that we are setting that we are typing in our front end and the password that we got from our user we are comparing that this will return a boolean and depending on that so if out please just return the user meaning that the user is an object that comes with username email and password remember okay if that uh, fails we're going to throw a new error my god if i can type and this one is going to be incorrect password and outside the if something got wrong i mean if we don't find the user just throw a new error and in this case incorrect email meaning that the email that was trying that we tried to look for doesn't exist in our database all right now regarding this error message we need to go back inside of our mm, auth controller and within the handle errors this one right here this is for the login method sorry login yeah, pause method here we need to say if the error that message should be equal to bah, 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 uh, incorrect email i want to throw within our object so object error you remember that notation and this should be to equal to a message that email is not registered because that's the message that we're going to send in our front end. All right, if the error that message is equal to incorrect, my God, single quotes, incorrect password, which is pretty much incorrect. Yeah, same spelling as uh, really here. Incorrect, everything lowercase, everything lowercase. Okay, then we'll say object error that password be equal to a single message which is that password is incorrect all right now we need to test that out in postman to start with so if we open postman remember uh, new tab 
uh, I already have it here, so I'm just not going to waste time. Just going to copy, buy, and this should be a plus method. I'm going to paste this. I'm going to save that in our test. Where are you? And I'm going to call it just login test. Save. This comes with the base URL, which is already uh, logging. I already have here a few the body, so I'm just going to grab it, paste it. You can copy that. Okay, I mean, pause the video and copy that. And uh, okay, we go within the body. Remember, raw and uh, yes, JSON. Just paste that. We send the email and the password. Let's send a uh, wrong um, email without the F. Send that. Yeah, object error. That email is not registered, which is already coming from our custom error message. See that? Where are you? Oh my God. Yeah, that email is not registered until we hit F, but we leave the wrong password sent. Okay, that password is incorrect again. It's coming from our custom error message. There you go. Now, the last thing to do is actually login. So, government has correct password, send that. And of course, we got the user and the body, the body that we just sent. And that's coming from our app controller, but the logging underscore method. See? Great. Now, this is for this from the server, the testing purposes. Now, in our front end, we need to create a new method, sorry, a new yeah, uh, logging.js. Pretty much, we're going to copy everything, everything from the signup.js into login.js remember to open that view where are you yeah, login and remember to use the script so pretty much the same as sign up just going to grab it copy and paste it just above the body class in tag and instead of sign up this should be login remember again using relative path login login the js and yeah but remember that here within the login method of type we are using just email and password okay so for that being said we need to remove a lot of things so only email and password okay goodbye username this is still the same this is just for you know you already seen that okay by username by username by username uh, okay sign up no this should be login remember Okay, email password, data object, okay, username doesn't exist in this part, so yep, everything is still the same. Email password, and if we succeed, instead of using window, I mean, you can use the global object window, but you can get rid of that, it's going to work pretty much the same. Alright, alright then, so that's it will be it. If we open Postman, uh, let me just grab this, and the password is Gabumon, remember? So, let me just paste, put a random password. Try to login. Got a refresh just in case. Copy paste. Random password. Yeah, that password is incorrect. We get the error message from the back end to the front end. There you go. Now I'm going to use a correct password, which is Gabumon. Gabumon. Going to login. And of course, it's redirected us to the main page because that's what we told to do it if the data that user is to sit, which, mean, which means that we already found the user. Now we need to get rid of this list because it doesn't make any sense if we already logged in to go to the login page or the sign up page. Furthermore, we're going to see in this section uh, protected routes, which is I don't want the user to type this particular uh, route to go there because this one's going to be protected. And as long as the user is logged in, he will be allowed, he or she will be allowed to go within this page. Right? So uh, we have seen, you know, already to how to tell the browser the user is logged in by sending this cookie. Now we need to go with the part of as long as the user has that cookie, the user is considered logged in. That sentence must be interpreted by our code. Therefore, we need the JWT to read if that cookie is still there for every request we make to the server. So now we need to go back inside of our VS code and create a new folder called middlewares. And then here I'm going to call a file out middleware.js. And here we need to have as like I told you JWT and my user model, right? 
that's the first next I'm going to create a function or method called check user here we're going to have request response and next wherever we run here it's going to return something or do something but we need to model that exports that as an object check user so this one right here we need to import that inside of app.js why so we'll say const destructuring that so yep should be equals to require and then wherever the file is at the moment inside of middleware's directory and out middleware file why is that because this piece of middleware we're going to use it right here i'm oh, sorry forget the comma right here comma and finally within our routes right here just an extra point besides this is that if we have a four four pages meaning that the rest of the routes so i would like to say uh, app that get and then the route that we're going to use is this symbol that i don't know how to tell the what is the name of that symbol i believe is asterisk sorry and then we'll say request response so whatever the page that is not being created yet for now let's just redirect that the user back to the main page you can create your own 404 page within your views uh, templates that's up to you but i would it to use just redirect the page redirect the user sorry back to the main page all right why take yours is being inside of here because we're going of course check first of all these two are for locals locals is a way to pass data to our view template and I'm going to pass the username into our view into our front end. That's the reason we're using check user here and here. But here in our route, which means inside of our each, each single method of our controller, uh, we're going to check if that JWT exists, if the token is still there. Therefore, we within check user we need to say const token should be equals request thanks to the cookie parser middleware, middleware and then cookies with an S and then JWT. Why that JWT? Because that's the name we set previously when we create that cookie, you see? JWT and JWT. All right then, we have the token. So if the token exists, please do something. Otherwise, just says rest that locals, again, this is a common way to pass data to our server, to, from our server to our view templates. And the data we're going to pass is the user and it's going to be back to null. Why is that? Because this is just a cleanup. If we don't have a token, just clean up the locals. Then next. Now, next is a method, inbuilt method uh, for from, sorry, Express.js that allow us to jump to the next piece of middleware, meaning that whatever it happens here, so meaning uh, here, next, jump to the next piece of middleware. If you don't call next, Right here is not going to jump there therefore the code is going to stop there and maybe create a error or conflict all right then so if the token exists of course i want to verify that token so verify the token then going to use the process that emb that secret underscore token because that's my first argument the token then the secret the same way as we created the the token before where are you this one right here you see where are we sending using the secret token and you know the options so we got the token we got the secret and then here in verified we're going to use a callback function which is going to be asynchronous that serves two parameters uh, the error object and the decoded token means that we got the token so if an error occurs during the process of verify this token or this JWT just run the same as we did previously clean up of the rest locals and jump to the next piece of middleware otherwise I'm just going to console.log my decoded token decoded uh, token just for now I'm going to console that you will see that in a second then I will say let's say that we have the decoded token so let user should be equals to await user because that's the way that we can deal uh yeah communicate with our database thanks to mongoose and we're going to find by id and here we need to send an id 
the coded token is an object of whatever is stored in the cookie. But what is that? Remember that we store what? A single ID property when we sign that uh, token. Remember, when we create a token, it comes with the ID property. Therefore, it's okay for me to say the coded token, which is the object, that ID. That's the way that we can get ID. So we are finding the user in our database. If that exists, that's okay. So we will say res that locals that the user should be equal to user. So if we found a user, okay, put it in locals that user. But who is user? Remember our or are you model? It usually contains the username, email, and password properties. So it returns the whole object. Don't worry about it. Just just console that log the user for now, so you will be able to see it. User dot 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 comma user, and then of course jump to the next piece of middleware. Right, everything has been set up. We need to use Postman here, and we need to send this request logging. All right, and send. We get the user, the body from the auth controller. If we go back inside of our VS code, span this window, you see we got the decoded token. Okay, sorry, this is the previous one. Don't worry about it. Send. And now we get it. Yeah, just need a hard refresh. So we have the decoded token, which is the ID. You know, that's what we wanted. Where are you, middleware? Okay, yeah, the coded token that ID, that's the reason we're using the ID property in order to find the user and the user that we're getting, you know, user is this one. This one is already coming from the database. Username, email, and hash password, of course. All right, now the next thing to do is actually go within Nap.js, where are you? Ba -ba 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 -ba, within our views, partials, because I told you that it doesn't make any sense if we are already logging in to show this. We're going to use a conditional thanks, thanks to EJS uh, templates. So the thing that we're going to use is the following. I'm going to say this notation, you know, closing tag. And we say if the user exists, why am I able to do this? Because remember from the old middleware, why are we returning? Well, the user. Remember the user. Rest locals, I'm sending the locals back to user. Thanks to locals, I'm allowed within my views to use the user because that's one I'm sending. Okay, again the if message. If that is true, I need to close this again. This is a curly braces, open curly braces, closing curly braces. If the user exists, I will say two allies. The first one is going to be only one for now. Say welcome and then equal sign because we're going to use uh, a variable. Remember the username is the whole object. Where are you? Jesus Christ. Okay, the user is the whole object and we're getting access just to the username. We're going to display the username only if the user exists. So otherwise here we're going to call else open curly braces and pretty much going to grab this and paste it right here and this should be closing uh, curly braces if the user sees show the username it doesn't just show the login and sign up uh, buttons all right so once again let's send another request just in case you no know, make a hard refresh hard refresh welcome user number one if I go to our final view, we should be able to see, okay, welcome user, but the logout button, which we don't have that yet, and we can create that. How exactly? We're back to Nav.js, we're going to say an li, and here an anchor tag, remember relative path, and it's going to run from logout page, sorry, log out um, address, sorry, how do you call this? Link, di direction, route, sorry, route, that was missing that word and a class just for log out and btn just for giving some styles and here we should say log out okay just a hard refresh from our local host 4000 there you go we have the button 
Now, in order to see the action actually happening, we need to go back inside of our routes. Right here, we need to create a new route. So we say router dot route, and this one is going to be the route of logout. And here we're going to get. This is going to be my HTTP request. Okay, okay we're going to be get. It's going to be logout, log out underscore get. Of course, this method doesn't exist yet. We need to import that from here. But again, it doesn't exist yet. So we need to go back within our controller and actually create that uh, method. So FNN to create a function, paste the name, logout underscore get. And of course, do not forget to export that. And here we need to say request response. And this should be asynchronous. And right here, we need to say, okay, uh, that cookies can be deleted both from front end and server side, but for security reasons, it's generally recommended to handle sensitive operations such as deleting cookies used for authentication on the server side. Remember, and also that when we create the cookie, we said HTTP only to true. So this cookie is not accessible in the front end. Therefore, we need to deal with that cookie right here. We cannot like delete it, but what we can do is saying rest that cookie thanks to cookie middleware. And remember the name of the cookie? Well, J double T and put it like this. And then the max H. Max H, I believe it was for the cookie. Yes, the property. And this case is going to be one milliseconds. Basically, we are overriding the cookie to be J double T not using the secret token and just give it a life of one milliseconds and after that we're going to say rest that redirect back to the main page when we are locked out locked out underscore get so fingers crossed let's make a hard fish uh, yeah there you go the cookie is still there right but if i click on logout boom cookie is vanished has gone we have just seen how to deal with the cookies, how to read the J, sorry, create the JWT, how to read it. But we haven't deal with any of the um, protected route. Meaning that if I open Postman, go here and try to log in in order to create that cookie. All right. So go with the login, email and password was Gabumon. Hit enter, should login out. Yeah, right there. Uh, but I'm still able to go to the login page if I hard code this or type even for the sign up. So we don't have any protected routes. Neither for the cards, meaning that I'm able to be in the card, even in logout, logout, go with Digimons and we are still able to go to cards. So we haven't seen any protected routes yet. So in order to do that, we need to go back instead of auth middlewares. Let me just shrink this and create a new method. I'm going to call require auth. Require authorization. And here we're going to pass the request, the response, and next. And here, pretty much we're going to follow the same ideas. Check user, we're going to say cons, token, request, cookies with an S and JWT. Okay, we need to say if the token doesn't exist, well, we're going to return res that status. We're going to sending a response of four of one meaning that it's not authorized for one and then redirect back to the main page sorry to the login page in this case okay if the token already exists we're going to naturally verify that jwt that verify we already been seen this first is the token then process that emb that secret underscore token from our environment variables and then here we're going not going to use an asynchronous function because we did it here in order to use a wait for the model but since we're not going to use the model here we're just going to call error and decode it talking for this one trigger our callback function in this case arrow yeah same as before arrow function so again if uh, error might occurs we need just to return well, read that status, and in this case, going to be 41 again, unauthorized, and we're going to redirect back to the main 
to the login page. Just that for you to see. Okay, that's if. Uh, if there is no error, meaning that the coding has been verified, just jump to the next piece of middleware. That's it. That's all we need to do for the required auth middleware. Of course, we need to export this. And sorry, let me shrink this window, but not that much. And yeah, export this and put it back. Oh, sorry, call it in side of our app JS. Where are we going to use require authorization? Or well, pretty much in the route that we want to protect, which is cards. This one right here. So requires out, comma, and depending if the user exists, of course we are allowed to go there. So that's the first step, all right? So uh, we don't have the cookie, right? No, we don't. So I need to open Postman to create that cookie. So copy the email address. But even furthermore, if I try to go to the cards, it's going to re redirect it back to the login page. If we type cards, it's going to redirect back to our login page because the token doesn't exist until we sign up. So Gabumon, sign up, there you go, view Digimon, and we're allowed to go to the cards page. So that's my first protected route, and that's great. Now, the other thing to do is to protect it's not like protected route, but again, it doesn't make any sense if we already log in and the user still is able to go to the login page. You see? We have the cookie, we are logged in, we have the username, but we are still able to go to the login page. We need a way to not get rid of that, but to deal with that. How can we do that? Well, we need to go back to our routes. You can do it right here if you want, but I will like a formal view or extend view of what I will going to do pretty much inside of here we're going to create a method actually a function just beneath the router so after logging so right here we have the function function there you go is user meaning that the user is there again so request response and next and the function that we're going to you is we're going to check if the locals exists remember uh, rest that locals that user if that exists meaning that we are uh, logged in we're going to return rest that redirect oh my god sorry about that guys redirect back to the main page forward slash okay this this is my function and of course we're going to jump into the next piece of middleware so each user is going to be used in the get HTTP request when we get the sign up, meaning that if we hard code the sign up in the search part of the browser, we're going to be redirected to the main page because the user is already led there or logged in. The same idea is going to run for the login route. All right, and finally, no, that's it, sorry, <laughs> login route. And finally, we need to test it out. So, Digimon cards, we're already logged in, okay? So if we go to the login page, we are being redirected to the main page. If we go to the sign up page, we are being redirected to the main page. Now, if we log out, we are allowed to go to the login page because we are not logged in and sign up Digimon cards, but we are not allowed to go to the view Digimons because we are not logged in. The cookie doesn't exist. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this as much as I did it and you learn a little bit of some you know, uh, from this video tutorial, if you like it, just give a like, thumbs up, it really helps me a lot. If there is another recommendation you would like to say, I would be pleased to read it to improve this channel. And yeah, this channel will rely on you, this depends on you if you share this video, like this video. Well, I hope you uh, can help me with that. Anyway, thank you for watching, have a good one, bye.